Hi YouTube and welcome back to part 6 of uh, WinCC tutorials. Um, in the last video we looked at um, being able to access our symbol table for uh, objects that we place on our screen. So we actually did the start button here and we did a press and release. Um, and by doing that we created a set and reset for the bit 0.7. What we're also going to do is just at the same time is we're going to have a little look at um, the rest of these properties. So um, here we've already had a look at the general um, uh, properties in the past. Uh, let me just raise that up a little bit. And you can see that we have uh, start and uh, uh, text symbols that we've placed onto the screen. Um, you also have the ability to put a graphic on it instead of having uh, text. So to do that, you just go to uh, uh, select your graphic. You can go to a graphics list, which we don't have, um, or a graphic that you can select from your um, uh, pictures file, your pictures directory. So if we go to there, uh, we select the arrow for graphics off, you see that you have some basic ones. You have got down arrow, uh, home, left, right, or up arrow. You can also uh, go and find them elsewhere on your computer. So we can find them by clicking that left hand button I'll show you again. This one here, okay, and it will open up a window so that you can go um, off into wherever you want to go to, which I am now going to look for my pictures, which are somewhere here. There we go. Open. There we go. So we've got um, a load of symbols. I've got a few logos for various things. Uh, we've got pictures, of elbows, and things for uh, another job that I did. Um, we've got logos that we've used or other pictures that we've used for uh, various things. So um, I could use, I'm just quickly looking. Oh hell, I, I'm a big Linux fan, so uh, I tend to use Linux, uh, or Linux, however you like to pronounce it, <laughs> um, all the time at home. So, there we go, we've selected a graphic for when it's on, sorry, for when it's off, when it's not pressed. To create a graphic for when it is on, if you want it to be anything different, then again you can do the same thing. Okay, so we'll go and find ourselves a, another uh, picture and I'll choose, uh, what have we got? Oh, let's just say transfer data. Let's, so when we actually run this in run mode, you will see that when I click the button, I actually have two pictures there that it will change. So when it's off, when it's not pressed, I get little tucks. Okay. When I click it, it changes the value to, uh, or changes the, the picture, sorry, to something different. Much the same way as we did the stop uh, in text, but we set stop in both on and off, and the same with reset. But here you can do it in that manner. So I'd be honest, oops, there we go, close that one off. Um, just allow the runtime to switch off. Generally, what you would have is probably the same graphic for each uh, state of the button, whether it be on or off. Um, if you select it, uh, don't put that graphic in uh, when you press the button. If I quickly go back and run it again, you will see that when you press it, it stays on the same picture okay so you don't have two states it only recognizes one state and it uses a picture for both states okay you can make the button invisible which is quite useful um, I've done it in um, uh, on a couple of projects now on uh, uh, on a conveyor where I may have a picture so while we're here let's just insert a quick picture okay so we've got a graphics view Let's just open up that graphics view. And I might uh, put in, uh, let's, under, sorry, general, uh, we might want a picture on there again. So 
we'll put in a let's put the heart in okay all right there we go we've got a heart if anybody's wondering why I've got a picture of a heart on my computer um, I tend to use this symbol um, as a communications uh, device so that uh, we have a, a heartbeat so that the HMI and the PLC talk to each other uh, over the communications and while they are talking and while the communications is up and working um, it allows the heartbeat to flash and if the heartbeat disappears or it doesn't flash then it means they, I've potentially got a problem uh, with communication so it can bring up an alarm hence why the heartbeat not that I'm not man enough to be able to uh, accept that I've got hearts on my computer but there we go <laughs> so if you have a graphics for example um, and this graphic may come on or it may go off and when it comes on you may want to be able to press that graphic in its on state so you can actually place an invisible button over that uh, that graphic and again if you run it you won't see the button okay you won't see the button you see it's slightly outlined but I can actually click it now you won't see any outline coming you just see the faint outline but it creates a button that's still working it just happens to be invisible and it can be handy for certain graphics if you want to use graphics like that I'll just place that back there and put it back onto the graphic and there we go okay in the properties we've got basically um, uh, the, the basics uh, of the actual button itself so you've got the appearance do you want black background do you want it um, background color if there is a background I mean here we have a picture so um, you know it's slightly different but I can change the foreground and it changes the color of the text change the background let's put it to blue I've got the background on the button as blue focus color is what happens when it's got focus and the focus width could be whatever you want it to be okay so if we run it again and there's your focus color okay when we got focus if we've not got focus then um, it disappears all right I don't use focus color so much I'll be be quite honest with you okay but you can change the width of that line as well whoops but it's always got to be a minimum of one layout well this is height and position so I can increase the height width or I should say width and height okay to make it bigger this way um, when you're getting two buttons the same uh, you can see that they're a little difference in size sometimes it can be a little bit fussy to try and get this correct so what you can do is say well it's 86 by 74 so click into there 86 by 74 and hey presto you've got a button exactly the same size position wise well again I can move that position okay up and down so it just gives you that the other thing is auto sizing here be very very careful when you're using auto sizing because it auto sizes the button to the size of your text or to whatever your picture is going to be so if that's a natural size of the picture that you had it will expand that to your picture size so be careful when you're using that um, there we go uh, it could uh, create some funny things happening okay so I dropped that off there and of course then you've got to make your button the right size again all right text again just positioning if you want it to go to the left or to the right or keep it in the center uh, vertical again top middle or bottom I sound like Barry Moore at the moment and that's not a good thing um, you've also got uh, the ability to flash <laughs> Barry Moore again um, standard flashing just means that if we see in the run mode that the button is now flashing and it's flashing based on the colors of your foreground and background okay 
So if you look at, sorry, under the appearance, uh, I might change that to a background of red and a foreground of yellow. Um, then we can run that and we'll see that that now flashes between red and yellow as opposed to um, the black and the white or the black and the grey sorry notice your text will automatically change as well okay um, you've got text size and type and whether it's and the style okay so we can make it bold we can make it 18 and we can make it I don't even know what that one looks like but there you go okay oops so flashing we've done miscellaneous right layers um, info text and layers I don't know how many people have dealt with AutoCAD or something similar uh, in the past but layers are similar and we'll go into those in depth uh, later and the info text will also deal with a little later um, but uh, layers can get a little more complicated um, you may not always use them um, but there's our button flashing again okay so I will deal with the info text and everything else at a later date with that particular um, thing security well authorizations will go into uh, authorizations at a later date generally if it's going to be uh, certain buttons you don't want any authorization at all uh, you leave it as basic but you may have administration monitor and an operator usage for it so you may have a system where you want to log in first and then allow those buttons to be used animation we've got appearance of object we'll do this again in uh, a couple of the other um, uh, icons that we'll use or objects that we'll use at a later date um, but again these are, enable you to have for example the visibility enabled um, and you can have that um, as I put there M0.1 if that becomes true then that becomes visible or hidden depending on these two here you have to tell it whether it's a bit or an integer that you're looking at so again you can make this visible on a certain value or invisible on another value so those are the projects uh, uh, states there um, you can enable the object exactly the same thing you enabled it based on a value oops based on a value remember make sure you tell it what it is whether it's a bit or an integer and whether you want it enabled on that or disabled on that bit and the rest of them are the same okay you can move them based on a value um, so you know I don't know you wouldn't want to move a button necessarily but you may have an object a picture or something on there that is moving along a conveyor system and you may want it to kind of visually track as it's going down the system um, and again direct movement um, you can once enabled you can tell it to start and where it's uh, y start x position and start y position is and how much you want it to offset by um, and it'll increase that movement along the way okay that would have to be an integer though um, we've dealt with the events appearance uh, yeah all of those things the properties in there and then general uh, yeah we've done the text the graphic and the invisible so there we go that's the basic um, uh, look of, uh, of the properties and to be quite honest the properties are virtually the same for every object that you place on your screen we will go through a few more as we uh, go down but it's just a case of playing with those uh, objects and uh, those uh, uh, properties of that object and you'll quite easily see what they're all about Alright, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care now.